I've been playing. Well, I mean, I've been singing and doing things musically since I was, I don't know, yeah, big. I, there's old home video of me just like swinging my leg on like a picnic table or something and just singing, but officially involved in music since I was like seven. My parents bought me a keyboard for, uh, it was like a first Holy Communion gift. Nice white Roman Catholic upbringing, but uh, got that. I've been playing piano for 15 years, took lessons for like on and off during, during that time. I was in uh, church choir, I was in a couple different ensembles during high school. Uh, I taught myself guitar around age 16, and I've been playing since then, and I picked up bass around the same time. Uh, and I also started songwriting about that time too. And just recently I got into the, the PAD department in Michigan for a couple classes. I studied under Jennifer Fur for 201, second semester junior year. Studied under Eric Santos first semester senior year, and then this past semester I studied under Stephen Rush and Jason Corey, and those have all been just tremendous helps, especially on like the technical side, you know, mixing my own stuff. And well, and the creative side has been a big boost too because Rush and Santos just are two guys that I want to like be, you know, I want to, I aspire to be those guys. The, th the thing about Santos is that like you know he has it in him to you know, be in, like, in a major band, you know, he has that, he's that caliber of musician, right? I guess he just had the misfortune of being like, born at the wrong time or something like that. Like, as far as your relationships with other people are concerned, like, I had always been in the mindset, oh, like, I have to, you know, kind of force feed my stuff to people, like, hey, like, this is my new song, listen to it, like it, da-da-da-da-da. But, I'm, like, through Eric, it was more, especially through the open bike night, it's learning about more that there's it's like it goes both ways right it's a reciprocal sort of thing like you realize you're there for each other you're not just there to build yourself up you're also there to build people up and eric was great for that for for 202 like he i don't think i don't think he said like one negative thing to like anyone like during that class like if if there was anything negative it was always like oh like i think you might like want to tweak this one plug in during that composition but other than that, it was like, yeah, like, I really, like, I had this image in my head, or, like, I thought of this, you know, like, just always building people, you know? Because everyone's got different approaches to music. It's like, I hate when someone tells you, oh, you have to do it this way, right? Or you have to write, like, with this sort of counterpoint, and, like, in this key, and with this progression, right? Just Eric was just very, very open, and that, that was cool. <laughs> I've, I've always wanted to play for, like, I don't know if you've seen the... Like, the Beatles at Shea Stadium, you know, where it's like this old black and white footage. The Beatles are on this like small stage, like in the middle of center field or something like that, and there's just like girls screaming, ah, like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. So I like I've always had that ambition. Like I always want to have my music be in that sort of stage, right? To be in that sort of viewing. But as I grow older, like I also realize that it's not whether or not that actually happens isn't like a definition of success, right? It's, it's, it's a growing experience of sorts. Because in writing all these different pieces, like, I've learned a lot about myself, and it's, it's, just, it's just calming, you know? It's, it's, very, it's very calming to be able to put yourself out there and say, like, okay, you know, regardless of what people think of this, you know, I'm a good person, like, and I've made some good stuff here, like, I'm proud of this. And just being able to put yourself out there, in that regard, like it, it's had so many other great effects on the rest of my life. You know, it just it livens your day, it makes your conversations with other people all that more lively. You get outside the, oh yeah, what's your major, man? Like, oh yeah, I'm a senior. Da da da. You get outside that sort of conversation. It's moments where you're putting yourself out there. The, the mindset that I usually go into, it's like, it's one of two things, right? I always go onto the stage thinking like, I want to make somebody's night, you know, just somebody. I want somebody to like, look up at me playing and think, damn, like, that was, that was the gym. that was cool. I want someone to think that, but then also at the same time, like, my favorite moments in music have been where it takes people outside of like, this, this world that we live in, right? It takes them outside of even like, my world, right? Because I know a lot of singers and songwriters will be like, come and listen to this like boy that dumped me like three or four years ago and you're going to listen to it and it's going to be painful and it was awful, blah, 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 he's a scumbag, whatever. Like, 
that's all well and good, but my favorite moments in song and just life in general have been when people can take you outside of like this world, right, that we live in, and just into another one for even two or three minutes, right? Like, I don't know if you know the song, uh, it's Song 2 by Blur, right? Like, that song makes literally no sense. It's, I got my head checked by a jumbo jet. It wasn't easy, but nothing is. That's like the first verse, and it makes zero sense, and there's no words to the chorus either. Well, actually, it's, it's woo-woo-woo, and then it's when I feel heavy metal, and it's, it just makes zero sense, right? But in trying to make sense of that, that's just the way our brains are programmed. Like, you almost sort of conjure up something to, like, make it make sense, right? I don't know. I think of some dude sticking his head in, like, a jet engine, right? That just doesn't happen. <laughs> And, but to be able to like step outside this world where people don't stick their head in jets and like jet engines into like a world where people do, it's cool. Like for two minutes, and then you're back in this world. And it's like wow. I, I I don't ever plan on like changing what I do to like what I do on stage to like please other people, right? Because if I did that, I'd just be playing you know four chord pop songs all night, you know. Because that's at the end of the day what the most people can relate to, right? And it, it kind of boils down to this idea that in music, like, ultimately, ultimately you're alone, right? Ultimately, it's your experience. Ultimately, it's the work that you create is, it reflects you, or it reflects something that you're passionate about, right? So why, why take that opportunity to just express what drives you and express the things that make you tick in song? Why throw that away to kind of gauge what other people are doing? So it, I guess it's this, it's this thermostat versus thermometer sort of argument, you know? I would much rather be a thermostat saying, this is the temperature that I'm taking it to. We're going to 112 today. And if you like it, like, awesome. Like, stay here and rock with me. If not, like, you're not thinking about me as much as I think about you. You know, instead of being, oh... Uh, you guys look like you're at about 71. I'm gonna just play around 71 degrees today. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. My best performing moments have been when there's there's a very deep, dark like corner of my mind. Not like not like dark in like the spooky, like scary sort of way, but just like dark where there's like literally nothing. Right? And my best performing moments have been when I can get myself into that mindset where just like, you're so in the moment. If I can put myself into that mindset, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. I might as well be alone in the middle of the, the desert. There is an excellent community here at Woodruff's. I've made, I've made a lot of great friends here. And I, I think that's a combination of not only like, not only the fact that there are just so many awesome musicians here and so many awesome people that come here just to share their talents with everybody, but it's, it's like I said before, there's been a change, I've experienced like a change in mindset, right? The thing that makes music what it is, is being able to put yourself out there, but also being willing to like reciprocate when people do the same, right? When you see someone else put themselves out there in like this position of vulnerability, like this is something I wrote, this is mine and to be supportive of them, it's huge. So this place is really further my understanding of that. And I mean, I guess there's also the obvious, you know, sharpen those performing chops, but I'd say it's what I just said was the big one. You're done. Is that it? Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> no, no, no.